Welcome all to another Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News webinar. Our presentation today is entitled Analyzing Complex N-Glycans Using Online 2DLC. I'm Jeff Bogaliskis, Technical Editor for GEN, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar presentation. Glycosylation represents the most common of all known protein post-translational modifications and can significantly modulate the biological functions of proteins. The analysis of N-glycans has become important for the detection of various diseases involving altered glycosylation patterns, including cancer and various congenital disorders, as well as the quality control of therapeutic recombinant glycoproteins. Choosing the appropriate platform for high-resolution analysis of complex N-glycans has been historically challenging for researchers. However, recent advances in equipment sensitivity and improvements in method development, investigators looking toward two-dimensional liquid chromatography, or 2DLC, to streamline their drug discovery workflows. Let's meet our speaker for today's webinar who will highlight the various online 2DLC concepts for glycan analysis. Sonia Snyder is an application scientist for bio-related analysis at Agilent Technologies. Dr. Snyder will inform us on her tips and tricks for improving glycan separation and resolution and to extolling the benefits of alternative 2DLC methodologies using the 1290 Infinity 2 system from Agilent. So before Sonia begins her presentation, I want to encourage the audience to submit questions for our Q&A session uh, at the end of the presentation. Sonia will try to get to as many questions as she can. So simply type your question into the Q&A box on the left-hand side of your screen and hit submit. All right, with all the logistics out of the way, let's get to the good stuff. Sonia, take it away. Thank you for the nice introduction. So the title of my talk today is Analyzing Complex N-Glycans Using Online 2DLC. I'm going to talk about two different case studies today. The first will be comprehensive and multiple heart cutting 2DLC analysis for epoglycans. And the second one will be comprehensive to DLC analysis of complex and glycosylated biopharmaceuticals in a collaboration with Biogen. In the first case study, I was focusing on the analysis of the N glycans of EPO. EPO is a 30,400 Dalton glycoprotein hormone that regulates the production of red blood cells. The molecule consists of a 165 amino acid single polypeptide chain and a complex carbohydrate addition that amounts to 40% of the total molecular weight. The molecular structure of the glycans is very flexible so that they can cover almost the complete surface of the protein. The glycosylation of EPO is highly variable because it contains multiple glycosylation sites, each of which can have a wide variety of glycan structures. The glycosylation portion of EPO consists of three N-linked glycosylation sites at asparagine 24, 38, and 83, and one O-linked glycosylation site at serine 126. In this scheme, four differently branched and charged glycans are displayed as examples that typically occur in EPO. Each of the three N-linked glycans is likely to contain up to four sialic acids. In this case, the sialic acid is N-acetylneuramic acid. I will call it shorter, NUAC. The amount of NUACs in EPO has a huge influence on the molecule's net charge. And this is used to classify EPO isoforms after its sialic acid content. For example, EPO alpha, beta, and so on. The method of choice for the analysis of glycans is typically hydrophilic interaction chromatography, HILIC, after labeling with 2-aminobenzamine, 2-AB, for sensitive fluorescence detection, where each HILIC efficiently separates glycans according to hydrodynamic radius, it is insufficient to fully resolve the complex mixture of branched glycan structures that are present in samples such as EPO or fatuin, as you see here on this slide. 
In this presentation, you will find the analysis of N-glycans of EPO as well as fatuin, which I have used for method development as a much cheaper sample. The glycosylation profiles of fatuin and EPO are similar regarding the sample complexity and presence of highly branched and thiolated N-glycans. The Agilent Advanced Bioglycan Mapping Columns demonstrated excellent resolving power for different glycoproteins, such as monoclonal antibodies and others. However, the separation within a one-dimensional helix setup is not sufficient to resolve all the N-glycans of EPO or fatuin. A combination of N-ion exchange chromatography and HELIC has a huge potential to enhance peak capacity in two-dimensional liquid chromatography due to the highly orthogonal nature of these two separation techniques. The paper that inspired me from this work was from Bones and co-workers. They showed an offline 2D analysis with a combination of weak and ion exchange separation in the first dimension followed by HELIC analysis in the second dimension. Weak anion exchange in the first dimension separates the N-glycans according to their net charge, which is equivalent to the amount of attached sialic acids. The single charged glycans elute first, followed by the double charged, triple charged, and quadruple charged. From this first dimension separation, 10 fractions were collected for reanalysis in the second dimension. The reanalysis was performed using helix separation in the second dimension, resulting in relatively long run times of about 20 minutes per fraction, which results in the total run time of about 4 hours for the whole analysis. The needed fraction collection step and reinjection makes additional hands on time necessary. A great possibility for speeding up the analysis of the complex epoglycans can be the Agilent 1290 Infinity 2 2D LC solution. It enables online 2D LC workflows for either comprehensive or multiple hard cutting analysis. Comprehensive 2D LC analysis using two sample loops within a two position four port duo wells captures all peaks from the first dimension. If higher resolution in the second dimension is desired, the Agilent 1290 Infinity Multiple Hard Cutting to DLC solution enables more flexibility. For example, longer cycle times or columns. This solution is comprised of two external valve drives with six position 14 port valves, each with six pre-installed 40 microliter loops, resulting in 12 loops total. On this slide, you see an Agilent Multiple Hard Cutting valve with pre-installed loops. For the analysis of epoglycans, I tested comprehensive analysis as well as multi hard cut analysis. For comprehensive analysis, there are two possible solid phase combinations weak and ion exchange in the first and helic in the second dimension, as well as the other way around. First, a comprehensive weak ion exchange helix 2 DLC setup was tested using Fatuin. A 110 minute wax gradient was used for the first dimension, followed by a 30 second second dimension comprehensive helix run, using a short 50 mm helix column. Although 40% acetonitrile was used for the first dimension solvents, the glycans were not retained on the helix column. Typically, helix column require a longer re-equilibration time than other types of columns. Presumably, the 30-second cycle times in the second dimension are not compatible with helix separations of glycans. Also, the high amount of water, 60% in the first dimension effluent, together with a relatively high loop volume of 40 microliters, and the very short gradient did not allow a good re glycan retention on the short 50 mm helix column. So, unfortunately, this method failed. Therefore, the order of the dimensions was reversed, and the comprehensive helix 
weak anion exchange separation was used in an online 2DLC setup, maintaining the highly orthogonal separation using the Agilent Advanced Bioglycan Mapping Column in the first dimension and the short weak anion exchange column in the second dimension. Here you see the 2DLC image from a Helix Wax 2D run for Fetuin. The 2D separation provides high peak capacity and resolution, and many of the co eluting peaks from the helic dimension are well separated by weak ion ion exchange. With parallel MSQ TOF analysis, the peaks were assigned to the corresponding charge, which for most peaks is equal to the number of sialic acids contained in the glycan. The detected parent ion masses were entered into the glycomod tool from ecstasy to find the related glycan structures. As expected, the second dimension separation groups glycans according to their charge. The neutral glycans, which elude immediately with the injection peak, are shortly followed by the singly charged glycans. More clearly separated, the double, triple, quadruple, and a few, at least in Fetuin, quintuple charged glycans elude with an increasing salt gradient in the second dimension. Therefore, in addition to increasing the peak capacity, the weak and ion exchange separation assists in peak assignment and furthermore provides the glycan charge profile that is required in the analysis of epoglycosylation. As mentioned above, epoisoforms are classified according to their net charge, epoetin alpha, beta, and so on. This setup enabled simultaneous charge profiling in combination with a well-resolved glycan peak pattern. On this slide, you see some examples of differently charged N-glycans from Fetuin. Single, double, triple, quadruple, and quintuple charged glycans having one up to five sialic acids. In this case, new ACs attached. The same analysis was carried out for the epoglycans. As you already saw for the fetuin glycans, it is again possible to identify the differently charged groups of glycans from single charged to quadruple charged for epo. Again, many of the co-eluting peaks from the helic dimensions are very well separated by weak and ion exchange. This slide shows a summary of the comprehensive analysis for complex N-glycans from biopharmaceuticals. Unfortunately, the combination of wax in the first and helic in the second dimension failed. Comprehensive helic wax analysis, on the other hand, was successful, providing high peak capacity. Complete automation of the glycan analysis was possible, resulting in a total runtime of 110 minutes. Due to the charge grouping of the sialylated glycans in the wax separation, data interpretation is simplified and the epoisoforms can be easily determined. If weak anion exchange in the first dimension is absolutely favored, the Agilent multiple hard cutting solution can be used, maintaining the helic column in the second dimension. Due to the multiple hard cutting setup, using 12 40 microliter loops in two six position 14 pulp valves, it is possible to park peaks from the first dimension, enabling longer second dimension gradients. Because one of the problems of having healing in the second dimension are the super short second dimension gradients in comprehensive to DLC. With multiple hard cutting, this problem can be solved. On this slide, you see the 2D pump setup with the loaded first dimension chromatogram with 11 peaks to be reanalyzed in the yellow marks, also represented by 11 2D time segments in the red box. Although only 10 loops are available for storing the peaks, while two loops are always in the flow path, this setup enables the analysis of more than 10 peaks. After the first peak is collected in the first loop of the first six position 14 port valve, it is immediately injected onto the second dimension column by switching the central to DLC valve. After the 
the two D valves have switched, the loops of the second six position 14 port valves can be filled with up to five peaks. As soon as the first 2D gradient has finished, the 2D LC valve switches back so that the loops of the first 6 position 14 port valve can be filled. This, however, requires that the 2D analysis of the first peak is finished. Therefore, for method development, the adjustment of cycle time in a second dimension is critical for flexible peak selections. The peaks that were chosen to be reanalyzed can be selected either by peak triggering using a first dimension detector or using time segments with certain loop fill times. This enables the reduction of solvent from the first dimension. The helic gradient in the second dimension starts with a total amount of 35% water. If too much water is injected onto the second dimension column, glycan retention can be reduced. The amount of water from the first dimension element can be reduced if the 40 microliter loops are only partly filled with the peaks from the first dimension. Here the loops are filled 62.5% with solvent from the first dimension, lowering the total amount of water that is injected onto the second dimension column. This slide shows six examples of second dimension gradients from the first dimension peak, 1, 4, 5, 8, 9, and 10. In this experiment, a gradient time of 3.5 minutes was used with a re-equilibration time of 1.4 minutes. The glycans were retained on the short helix column and a good 2D resolution was achieved. Areas that are only visible as shoulders in the first dimension, for example peak 8, revealed at least eight peaks in the second dimension. On the most of the peaks, which are only showing one major peak in the first dimension, several underlying peaks were detected and resolved. So, in contrast to the comprehensive 2D LC solution, the multiple hard cutting solution allows analysis by helix in the second dimension. This is especially because the multiple hard cutting approach allows the use of longer gradients and re equilibration times in the second dimension. The multiple hard cutting solution offers greater flexibility and facilitates the more technically demanding combination of weak anion exchange in the first and helix in the second dimension. With this 2D separation method, the user is able to select several peaks from the weak anion exchange chromatogram for additional separation in the second dimension. In addition, because the peaks are parked in the 40 microliter loops of the two valves, the second dimension separation is no longer limited to super short gradients. Instead, the cycle time of the second dimension can be adjusted as needed, depending on the distribution of the peaks within the first dimension chromatogram. In comparison to offline 2 DLC, using weak anion exchange and helix analysis with fraction collection like Bones and their co-workers did, a time savings of about 70% was possible, reducing the total analysis time from over 4 hours down to about 70 minutes. After presenting previous results on a biopharma customer seminar, I was asked to run a highly glycosylated protein sample from the U.S. biotech company Biogen in Cambridge, which was a great opportunity for me to test my 2DLC approach on a real-life sample, and so a really amazing collaboration came up. I'm really happy to present some of the results of this collaboration to you. For the sample, I started in a similar way, first looking at the complexity in a helix separation. On this slide, you see the separation of the biogen glycoprotein, labeled with 2AB, which is still the gold standard for N-glycan analysis with HPLC and fluorescence detection. However, 2AB is not suited for mass spec analysis, as the signal intensity is very poor. Here we show the 2AB labeling by reductive amination, shift space intermediate not short. The 2AB labeling of the glycans result in the mass of a glycan plus 119 Dalton. Due to protonation, the resulting mass shift in the MS is about 120 Dalton. Recently, Prozyme has introduced a new instant glycan labeling reagent, instant PC, instant protein. 
that provides markedly increased MS and fluorescent sensitivity. It forms a stable urea linkage with N-glycans and is designed for improved performance in fluorescence and mass spectrometric detection. Instant PC contains a tertiary amine, which generates high MS signal in positive mode. It has to be considered that the optimal fluorescence excitation emission wavelengths for instant PC dye conjugated to N-glycans are different from 2AB. The excitation wavelength is 285 and the emission is 345 nanometers. The mass spectrometric analysis show a plus of 261.3 Dalton higher mass. The 1D helichromatograms result in different peak pattern due to the different dye used. But both chromatograms reveal that the resolution is not sufficient in the first dimension. Therefore, the 2 DLC comprehensive approach was applied, running a long helix separation in the first dimension, followed by a weak and ion exchange separation in the second dimension. On this slide, you see the chromatographic conditions. I won't go through it in detail, but you see on the first dimension on the left side, you see that I have a very long run in the first dimension at a very low flow rate. And in the second dimension, there are very short cycle times of about half a minute at a flow of 1.5 mil per minute. This slide shows the separation of the biogen glycoprotein 2AB labeled with fluorescence detection with the 2DLC comprehensive approach. You see that a very high um, peak capacity was achieved and you see again a clear separation of the neutral, singly, doubly, triple and quadruple charged glycans. So again, here a classification um, after the charge is possible. The structure of the new instant PC dye puts a positive charge to the negatively charged silylated end glycans, and this leads to a loss of one charge state. Unfortunately, this fact leads to the loss of resolution in the second dimension, resulting in several overlapping peaks in the comprehensive 2D image. However, a big advantage of the new instant PC label is the sensitivity in MS detection compared to 2AB labeled n glycans. Therefore, MS detection was enabled with similar sensitivity to fluorescence, which was not possible with 2AB labeled N glycans. However, the detection with fluorescence is very specific and shows mostly the labeled glycans varies with MS detection, especially where the neutral glycans elude, the baseline signal is pretty high, leading to a noisy background. By clicking on the spots in the LC image software user interface, here illustrated by the red arrow, the MS spectra can be viewed. And so, the MS spectra as well as the peak table can be displayed and investigated. With the recent update of the LC image version, also MS-MS data can be displayed. Again, by clicking on the peak spots, the MS spectrum, the precursor can be displayed, as well as the corresponding MS-MS spectra. In this case, three MS-MS spectra were recorded. So, I would like to summarize the work with the biogen glycoprotein with comprehensive 2DLC helix wax chromatography. The 2DLC method setup meet excellently the requirements for the separation of the highly complex N-glycans pattern of the biogen glycoprotein, as well as we saw for the EPO glycoprotein. So, there was an immense increase of peak capacity with high resolution. 
we saw a different pattern in first dimensional analysis as well as in two dimensional liquid chromatography analysis. It was a different charge pattern due to a different label. With the two AB label, five charge states were detected, but with the instant PC label adds a positive charge on the glycans, only four charges were visible. Due to the loss of one charge state, the resolution of the 2AB sample is superior to the instant PC sample. However, the instant PC sample showed good sensitivity with mass spectrometric detection compared to only to little sensitivity for the 2AB label. MS and also MSMS analysis were enabled for the instant PC label. So if you're interested in this topic, in 2D LC analysis of biopharmaceuticals or um, other N-glycan analysis of monoclonal antibodies, further information can be found in our application notes. And with this, I would like to finish and thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take your questions. Thanks, Anya. That was a great presentation. You gave us a great look at some innovative online tools for 2D LC analysis, as well as some helpful tips that should prove useful for improving glycan separation and resolution. So before we start the Q&A session, I want to remind everyone uh, this is your final chance to submit your questions for Sonia. So hurry up and send them in now. All right, so it looks like we've gotten a bunch of really good questions that have come in. So if you just bear with us for a few, few seconds while we get everything prepped for the Q&A session, uh, we'll try to get to as many questions as possible. All right, everyone, let's get to our first question. Uh, Sonia, one of our audience members would like to know, was the MS analysis performed in positive or negative mode? So the MS analysis was performed in positive mode because um, the new instant PC label is uh, designed to work mostly sensitive in the positive mode. Alrighty, thank you for that. Uh, our next question, um, someone would like to know, was the high buffer concentration of the ion exchange chromatography in the second dimension problematic for the MS analysis? So no, I did not have any problems with the buffer concentration because um, I was using ammonium formate buffer and um, this is supposed to be um, MS friendly and uh, so it was, um, it was okay. All righty, thank you. Uh, we have another question, it's a little tangentially related, uh, but our audience member would like to know, are varying pore size columns available for peptides and proteins? So yes, um, so in, in, in this um, analysis I did not use any peptide or protein columns, but yes, we have different column pore sizes available for, for peptide and protein analysis, uh, 130 angstrom up to 300 angstrom, and uh, so specifically designed for protein analysis. All right, thank you for that. Um, and we have one last question. Uh, one of our audience members would like to know, uh, do you have a database of instant PC labeled glycan uh, for the application? No, for this application, unfortunately not. All righty, thank you. And so with that, it looks like we've come to the end of our webinar. Uh, so I'd like to remind everyone that the webinar will be archived at, on our website at www.genengnews.com for up to a year. So if you missed any parts of it, you, know, you can watch it again, or you can feel free to forward it to your friends and colleagues, which we always recommend. I'd like to thank Sonia again for her informative presentations, uh, presentation, excuse me, and I'd like to thank the audience for their attention and thoughtful questions. And a very special thanks goes to Agilent for sponsoring this webinar. So hopefully we'll see you again in another Gen webinar in the near future. Goodbye for now.